Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph this absolute value equation. And you can see this absolute value equation is being multiplied by 3. So what exactly is that 3 going to do? So to do that, we need to understand um, what our transformations are, which I forgot to write down. So let's look at these transformations. Now, notice if we're adding or subtracting inside of our absolute value or outside, we're going to have some translations. We're going to have some shifting, right? Notice I'm not adding or subtracting anything. So there's no, not going to be a shift. That means my vertex is still going to be at 0, 0. Where you can say, here's the parent graph for y equals absolute value of 3, or of x. So my vertex is going to remain the same. Now, there's a couple different ways to think about this. Um, the first way is just to create a table of values. And when creating a table of values, since the, since the absolute value function has an axis of symmetry about the y-axis, I, I can just find values to the right and then reflect them over, and reflect the points over to find the remaining part of the graph. So if I want to create a table of values for this equation, basically all I need to do is choose points to the left or to the right. And I'll choose points to the right. I'll just choose two points. So I'll choose 1 and 2. Then simply all I do is plug in my x variable in for, or my input, my x in for x, and then solve for y. So I have y equals 3 times the absolute value of 1. Well, 1, absolute value of 1 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. So instead of my parent graph of going over 1, up 1, what that 3 is doing is I'm going over 1, up 3. 1, 2, 3. All right. When I do 2, y equals 3 times absolute value of 2. Absolute value of 2 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. So over 2, now I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right. Then I can reflect over my axis of symmetry. Instead of going to the right 1, up 3, I can go to the left 1, up 3. To the left 2, up 6. And therefore, I can now graph my linear equation. The other thing that's kind of helpful about this, what we notice is my graph has been horizontally compressed. You know, it looks like it's being stretched vertically as well. Um, but what we can see on this is also, when you're just looking at this, if you can always think of the parent graph is always um, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1. Well, it doesn't matter if I'm shifting left or right. That really just changes where my vertex is. As long as I don't have a number that's being, as long as I either have an A or a B, basically whatever that number is, is going to be how is going to be your transformation from your point over. So you always go over 1, but then based on your A or if you have a B, that's going to tell you how high to go up. So it's always over 1 up 1. But since I'm multiplying by 3, I go over 1 up 3. If this was like 1 half, then I'd go over 1 up 1 half. All right? So just a key little tip that can help you out with that. Um, oh, I didn't write in 2 and 6. So therefore, negative 1 is 3 and negative 2 is 6. All right? But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph an absolute value equation with a horizontal compression. Thanks.